Welcome to the 2021 Spring Meetings Covenant Talk Series. I am Jihad Azur, Director of the Middle East and Central Asia Department of the IMF. I want to thank uh, Governor Fahd al-Mubarak for joining me today. Uh, Governor al-Mubarak, uh, welcome, or I would say welcome back to Sama. Let me start with my first question. My first question is about the G20 presidency of Saudi last year. 2020 was an exceptionally challenging year for the world, and Saudi was uh, in hold of the G20 presidency. As a Sherpa in, uh, during the uh, presidency, as well as also in charge of preparing uh, this important uh, events. And looking back, what are the key issues or achievements that uh, uh, were accomplished during um, this exceptional year, 2020? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jihad, for uh, inviting me to uh, your talk. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back uh, to the IMF. Uh, and uh, indeed, 2020 was uh, a very challenging year. And Saudi Arabia happened to be at the helm of the G20 group, uh, which is the most important uh, group. G20 was created even at the early times of finance minister and central bank governors uh, to manage crisis. Uh, back in the Asian crisis, again in 2008. And, uh, for 2020, uh, we have been working very hard in identifying during 2018 and 19, uh, what are the most important priorities that we should uh, address as part of our G20 program for 2020. And we have met with uh, all uh, kind of uh, organizations and people. We reviewed all past communiques and issues being discussed uh, in the G20 and uh, other international organization groups. Uh, we have met with the IMF, thank you. We had a workshop uh, for three days, uh, also with the World Bank. I, uh, WTO, WHO, Agriculture and Food, uh, uh, OECD, and where we start brainstorming about what are the top important uh, priorities to address in 2020. And indeed, we designed a very, very ambitious uh, program where I took it around to all the Sherpas in the last part of 2019, and uh, uh, the common word from uh, uh, all the Sherpas that it is very good uh, and very important program. However, it was too ambitious and they were afraid that we will not be able to cover it during the presidency year. Uh, and we had a uh, theme of realizing opportunities of the 21st century for all, all people, all countries. And it has three main aims, which is the one and the most important one is empowering people uh, through fostering res resilience in health care provision, uh, renewing their focus on education and protecting labor market. This is very, very important with especially focusing on women and youth. The second aim also we selected for our presidency is safeguarding the planet. After all, that is our uh, neighborhood where we live and to make strong growth sustainable while conserving our natural resources. Our third aim is shaping new frontiers uh, by harnessing the benefits of digital technologies, boosting the opportunities for all, and ensuring a better connected world. We have translated this into many different uh, priorities and programs, and we listed at the beginning, over 120 priorities where we screen them through criteria of which ones are most important globally, uh, which one are implement implementable, and uh, which one also relevant to the region, because also the G20 moves from one region to another, and therefore we met with the um, Arab Monetary War uh, Fund, uh, the Islamic Development Fund, and some other regional organization to understand what are the challenges in the region. So we put together a, a very ambitious uh, program 
in all areas uh, in the health and employment, uh, women empowerment, uh, uh, environment, energy and climate, as well as uh, water for the first time to be in the table of the G20 discussion. And of course, we came up with a very important uh, uh, areas in the Riyadh initiative on the future of WTO. And this puts the principles of reform uh, of the WTO under its own uh, uh, umbrella. Also, we have done a lot of work in the anti-corruption area where we uh, launched the Riyadh initiative for enhancing international anti-corruption law uh, enforcement cooperation. There are many other areas uh, in the financial inclusion and uh, digital tax uh, areas that were also part of the program. However, uh, in the first quarter of uh, the year, uh, we were hit with the pandemic, uh, something, to be honest, we did not plan for. Uh, we did uh, think uh, during the store 2019 what kind of crisis that could come up that we could be ready for. So we thought of debt crisis, currency war, uh, trade war, uh, possible recession, uh, digital cyber security, but we never ever thought that it's going to come from a, a pandemic of uh, this magnitude. So immediately, uh, King uh, Salman uh, called for uh, a summit, uh, invited all the leaders and put forward a very strong agenda, working with all international organizations and members uh, in order to uh, safeguard the uh, planet and the people. This pandemic, this crisis was far-reaching health, social, and economics. In matters of uh, UE, the whole world was frozen. Trade, travel, and uh, financing. So we had to uh, uh, put together a new agenda for, uh, to combat uh, this pandemic. And indeed, uh, in the presence of all the leaders of uh, uh, G20 and invited guests and international organization, uh, the summit took place on March 26. And uh, many decisions were taken. And uh, the leaders decided uh, in several actions. One of them is injecting an unprecedented stimulus of over $11 trillion to different economies, contributing $21 billion to support development uh, and uh, uh, research and development and distribution of vaccines where Saudi Arabia has contributed five times. Uh, also, launching a debt relief initiative uh, by reallocating 20 billion toward their imminent uh, health and financial crisis for 73 eligible countries, thanks to the IMF. Uh, support and work in this area. We're also committing to ensure the flow of vital medical supplies. It was very important to reopen the borders. And uh, uh, the leaders at that time decided to do whatever it takes for us to overcome this uh, pandemic and its uh, impact on lives and livelihoods. Mm. However, the Saudi uh, G20 presidency, despite these new uh, challenging areas, we decided to continue pursuing our original agenda, and we remain focused on that. However, we did uh, uh, modify it uh, a little bit in order to better suit the situation and help in the recovery. Uh, and uh, we decided to go with restoring growth by working together to overcome the pandemic and secondly to recover stronger by shaping more resilient, sustainable, inclusive future growth. So with all of these, we were able to come up with very powerful declaration by the leaders, which had many, many uh, initiatives, both uh, in 
March as well as in November. And indeed, uh, Saudi Arabia is the only country that had two summits in one year. So in a very challenging year, Jihad, and it was, uh, we were very happy and honored and humbled uh, to lead the war uh, for the world government. Thank you very much, Governor. Let me move to my second question, which is on Saudi. At the same time, you had to deal with uh, the global crisis, but also with the crisis that hit Saudi like many other countries. A double whammy shock with the COVID-19, as well as also the volatility in oil price that has led to a drop in oil revenues. Uh, how do you assess uh, the management of, of the crisis in 2020 for the Saudi economy? And what do you attribute uh, uh, the uh, relatively good performance in the non-oil sector that we saw in 2020? Thank you. Indeed, uh, when the crisis hit, Saudi Arabia was in a strong position to face up to it. Thanks to our vision 2030 that started four years ago and started uh, uh, bearing fruits, uh, and we have seen uh, our uh, very strong health uh, systems. Uh, being resilient, sustainable, and being able to uh, sustain the huge impact of uh, COVID-19. We also took very strict measures uh, in terms of lockdown, uh, other uh, social restrictions in order to protect our people. We made uh, uh, vaccines available to all those who live in Saudi Arabia, whether they are Saudis, non-Saudis, even those who are illegal uh, immigrants. Uh, when it comes to health, there is no difference in human treatment to these people. This definitely have helped us uh, minimize the spread of the virus uh, and at the same time, uh, fiscal uh, measures as well as uh, central bank uh, programs have helped minimize the damage on small and medium businesses. Programs that have helped uh, uh, contribute to social safety for those who are not able to maintain their employment. Uh, also, the uh, uh, central bank uh, have done several programs that uh, uh, help uh, SMEs and other uh, small uh, and uh, micro companies. Thank you very much. Let me focus on this issue, uh, uh, on what uh, the Central Bank Sama did. Um, how do you assess the various measures that were introduced back in 2020 to uh, protect uh, livelihoods and support SMEs and private sector? And when do you think uh, that Saudi will start uh, uh, unwinding some of those measures? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Central Bank has done uh, programs. Uh, we stayed close to understanding where are the maximum uh, risk on our uh, uh, economic sectors. And we find that SMEs are the most impacted. Therefore, we started uh, uh, for several programs, at least four. One of them is uh, we ask the banks to defer uh, payments uh, due by the SMEs. Uh, additional uh, program is guaranteeing finance. Uh, the banks, the, the, the central bank, along with other government entities, we would help SMEs by guaranteeing their uh, loans for them to be able to sustain the temporary situation. A third program was a loan guarantee uh, as well as fee support for point of sale. We reduced the cost sale and uh, commercial activities were low. We have reduced the cost of on the uh, transactions. Uh, this altogether uh, cost about $74 billion 
that we were very happy to offer it uh, to the uh, uh, economy. Additionally, uh, the central bank also injected uh, over uh, $13 billion of uh, cash into the bank in order to offer ample liquidity for them to be able to uh, uh, offer loans and other activities to consumers and uh, SMEs. Finally, uh, we also activated open market operation for banks to reduce short-term liquidity fluctuation. These programs together have worked very well uh, and has been very effective in minimizing the damage on the uh, economic uh, activities, especially for small and medium services. We have also renewed uh, many of those programs uh, recently as we don't think it is wise to prematurely uh, withdraw from those programs until we see actual recovery. Uh, on that, Governor, uh, how do you see the recovery in 2021 for Saudi? As we are uh, 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 just finished the first quarter of this year, I tell you that it's positive. Uh, the IMF predicted 2.9 recovery, uh, uh, 2.9 uh, growth this year. Uh, and uh, uh, we believe, uh, looking at the initial indicators uh, of the economic activities uh, and the stability of oil prices, thanks to OPEC Plus that Saudi Arabia is leading, even though we are sacrificing a little bit in the production. However, uh, uh, achieving a stable oil prices is good for Saudi Arabia, for producers, consumers, and for the region. Thank you very much. Let me move to my next question. And my next question is more, uh, I would say, a mix between the personal and uh, where do you stand today? Uh, you're coming back and welcome back, as I said in my introduction. Uh, after five years uh, being Minister of State, and then during this period, you uh, worked hard on the G20 delegation as well as also uh, the presidency of Saudi for the G20. Now you're back into Central Bank. How do you assess the change that took place in the central banking activities worldwide and also in Saudi? And what do you see as the key priorities uh, going forward? Especially that the COVID-19 was an accelerator of several No, indeed, uh, definitely having had the experience of spending some time uh, with the G20, especially on the Sherpa side, it opened my mind to other areas that we as central bankers and finance ministers don't uh, necessarily uh, uh, dive deep into. So I have been able to work on uh, labor policy, health policy, education policy, environmental, uh, climate, energy, uh, anti-corruption, all, uh, and even uh, for women, we have done so much work in women, and we launched the women empowerment uh, during our presidency. When I came back, uh, this wealth of knowledge uh, globally have helped us a lot in better understanding the challenges of the hour. Uh, furthermore, my experience as uh, Minister of State, a member of the Minister, Council of Ministers, have also given me the opportunity to see policies of other uh, ministries and other sectors where it will, uh, would uh, need to be integrated nicely with the uh, monetary policy and uh, fiscal policy, uh, for example, housing as one uh, of the areas, and uh, telecommunication and technology is another area. So, indeed, uh, with this exposure, uh, I came back to find even more challenging. Uh, however, uh, I came back after four years uh, of implementing Vision 2030, which aimed uh, at diversifying the economy, developing new economies, developing new sectors, such as the tourism sector, the cultural uh, sector, sports sectors and there are many other uh, sub-sectors that have started. We have uh, uh, a lineup of very large uh, projects uh, around the kingdom that will make Saudi Arabia even more attractive for its own people and for our 
uh, countries uh, around the world to come here uh, for business and tourism. So uh, I think uh, there are challenges uh, in the central bank. I will tell you that uh, one of the challenges is the financial digitalization, whether coming from uh, financial uh, technology, fintechs, or uh, coming from digital banks that will be licensed soon. Uh, all of these are uh, challenges that require the central bank to catch up very quickly uh, and be able to cope with the changing environment.